hey, it's Kaku is Kek, or Kaku is Black, or whatever, it's Kaku here, and today we're going to be talking about uh, Full Metal Alchemist's uh, power system, and why I think it's one of the best power systems in anime, uh, com- I think it's one of the top 10, I'd say Chris Energy is pretty OP too, I really like that, for different reasons, but obviously, but uh, I want to just come in here and speak about Full Metal Alchemist's uh, power system. I think Full Metal, Full Metal Alchemist's power system is just so great is because it's just so wide verse. On the at the current moment of this recording, I'm on episode 12 of Full Metal Alchemist, the original, not Brotherhood, the original. But what I can say so far is um the power system seems to be very diverse. Like alchemy. Is just basically law of equivalent exchange and what i like about uh the law of equivalent exchange is basically what i like about it is it's so diverse think about it it's it seems fair it has limits obviously listen law of law of equivalent exchange you give something but something at equal value must be like fucking to given up that's kind of like in real life like for example let's say someone works out right they break their bones they break their muscles they regrow in the morning they sacrifice that pain and that hardship they sacrifice all that pain, time, and energy into working out, and then they grant they grant uh, regain muscles. I think it's a, I think it's bringing like a real life concept, like in our real world, into, into a fucking, what's it called, into a fucking anime, which makes it very relatable and really realistic. That's why I like that's why I like the power system so much. It's just, it, it's so diverse. Like, and if if you if you don't follow those rules, bad stuff can happen to you. And it's just so like mysterious. Well, in the, in the part I'm on, I'm not finished, but it's just so mysterious. Like in the beginning of the story, Edward, Edward Elric, and his brother, they fucking die, right? They don't die, but in the beginning, they try to re, re they try to gain back their dead mother, and uh, it goes wrong, and his brother gets stuck in a fucking suit, which is very weird, by the way. It's very weird, but but that that's kind of like a good thing, and I'll explain that why later on. But he, he, Edward loses his eggs and his brother loses his body and gets his body into a suit. It's so weird because in that, in that, like, kind of situation of what the consequence would be, me personally, I couldn't have thought about that. Like, it wouldn't make any sense to me how his body gets stuck into a suit, uh, how why he would lose his arm and stuff like that. But I kind of, it's just like a repercussion, right? He, he tried to do something that wasn't equivalent. He just gave blood and like body liquids into the into the circle, transmutation circle, and then he lost something. But he didn't. He tried to get his mother back, but it didn't work. Which just kind of like the starting group off the starting uh plot off of the series. He loses his arm. They give a body. Now they now they have a goal to work towards. They want to get their mother back or get their bodies back. Uh, but yeah, it's just so bizarre because. It just, you, I couldn't have thought about that. It was just so amazing because, like, when you get your spirit tucked into another body or to another fucking metal of armor, when that happens, it really makes no sense. It makes no sense. It's because, like, alchemy is just so mysterious. Like, what's the consequence? There's no specific consequence for a certain thing. It's all mysterious. It's all random. If you do this, then something bad can happen to you if you don't give a right equivalent exchange. If you break that law of equivalent exchange, you'll go to jail. Not a jail, but you'll go, you'll get a consequence. You'll either lose the body part, you'll either die. You get, it's a bunch of mysterious stuff, so it's really dangerous, but at the same time, it makes the story even better. And it's just great to follow Edward, Edward and Elric just f- through the story as they begin to level up and understand alchemy and become a state alchemist and stuff like that. It's just so bizarre because we don't know what the consequence is going to be specifically. So we just have no idea what can happen next. And when you don't know what happens next in the story, that what makes it great. If you didn't predict everything in a story, I felt I kind of feel like that's kind of boring. Like you know what's gonna happen next. If if it just follows tropes and cliches, then you already know what's gonna happen. It's not an interesting story. But when there's a consequence, you know there's a consequence, but you have no idea what it's gonna be. You have no idea what's gonna happen next. You have no idea what the what's gonna happen in the story. Then it's it's amazing. If any story can do this. Is trick the viewers and trick the and trick the audience at the same time then that's a brilliant story look at omni man look at invincible like that whole shebang i should make a video on that too it's a good idea but yeah that's why i love with power system so much because it just it's equal it's equal 
It has set boundaries. It looks cool. You can do a bunch of stuff with it. It's diverse. And overall, it has a, a good cool factor. And it has an obvious drawback. Which is, you have to do something equivalent to exchange or you get punished. Easy as that. Simple. But yeah, it's been your boy Keku. And I'm out. Peace.